Hello folks, welcome back to another video. This is video 22 of the Avid of Cyber 2023. In this video, we're gonna be speaking about SSRF attacks and let's jump into the video and have some fun. All right, folks, so here we go on the desktop. So day number 22, we're gonna be speaking about and doing SSRFs, right? So here are some of the learning objectives. We're gonna be understanding what are the different types, how the attack works, how to exploit the vulnerabilities of the SSRFs, and then mitigate, right? We want to make sure we can have some protections in place in order for us not to get hacked again, right? So what is SSRFs? The different types of attacks, the basic blind, uh, semi-blind attacks. And then we can look at prerequisites for exploitation, vulnerable input uh, points, lack of input validation. And how does it work, right? So you identify the vulnerable input, we manipulate the input, and then like you see this little this uh, little blue guy here, the adversary, which is the bad guy, sends a request, and you can see how you, you know, how it goes about, how it in, in, in transit, right? Requesting unauthorized resources, and then exploiting the, the responses, right? So using it, how we have to do, how we have to talk to it, we need the attack box and the VM. I booted both of those up. So we are good there, we can start it up. And now let's go ahead and go to this site, see if we can hit it, make sure we're good. And let's open up a Firefox, double click on Firefox. And let's give that a moment. And how to add the host, we can click the add host, you can do all that fancy stuff if you need, if you need to. Let's go ahead and see if we're gonna need to do that. Do we need to do that? Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like we need to do that. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, command shell here. And as you can see, it's in the Etsy. So if you cat etc and then host, we can see it right here. We need to add the IP address. In our case, we can do it right there. So let's do nano. Let's do it up arrow and just put nano instead of cat. All right, nano. And then we can just add this down here. All right, so we're gonna do 10.10.134.243. And then we're gonna do, let's do paste, because I should have it still, but we're gonna go ahead and just take this out. All right, cool deal. So now that looks good. So now we can do a control X. Yes, save it. Yep. And now let's go ahead and cat it out, make sure it's there. We can see it. Now let's go ahead and hit refresh here. And bada bing, here we go. Bing bong, here we go. All right, so that was this inside joke in my head and I just, just said bing bong. All right, so now we have a username and password here. Let's go ahead and manipulate the input. I'm gonna be 100% honest, APIs, all this web app stuff is something so new to me. And this is interesting because I'm learning something new. So let's see how far I can get. All right, so you just need to visit the machine name. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's, let's see how we're gonna do this. Uh, this is just a picture. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, access it. All right, so let's go ahead and just do this. And your IP, IP of client name. All right, so it's gonna show us right here. Explo let's go ahead and just Let's see how this is going to work. Let's copy this right here. Let's see. And let's open up a new browser. I just want to start fresh. Hit enter. All right, so this is, just sh this is showing us the PHP code. And from my understanding, obviously, any kind of config and all that stuff, like I said, I'm no web app guy, but this doesn't look, this doesn't look promising. This doesn't look good, right? So included in here is config.php. Any kind of you know, server-based code and stuff like that, usually you can get some juicy information from the config.php file. So as you can see in here, this is the index dot, and the index.php. So we can see here, there's really, this is just the, the code, right? So now if we go to this config.php, let's see if we can change this index to config.php and see if we get anything, I don't know what we'll get, but let's see, config.php, oh snap. So it looks like we got a username and password. So let's go ahead and copy this. I just wanna copy this and let's just use Sublime, that's fine. 
let's just paste this in. Oh, jeez. Cancel. That's fine. Let's paste that here just so we can have it for, for later references. All right, so the file scheme when when using a URL typically refers to the local files on a computer system. Obviously, any kind of any kind of files that you have on your local machine, you just have to be careful. Like what says here, any files. So let's go back here. Oh, when I, I, let's go back here for a second. And right here, this is showing us the the path. If you know Linux, it's pretty, you know, var www, this is showing us that this is indicating a website, a web server, right? HTML, that should give it away. And then index.php, right? So now we can also go to Etsy. Um, let's, let's try that, let's give that a jingle. All right, let's see if we can uh, get anything there. Uh, TC, all right, so, here we just have like hashes and, and not really hashes. Back in the day, back in the old days, you can actually look at the passwords in the old Linux systems. Obviously they patched that up. But what we can do now, we can take these usernames, right? Root, daemon, blah, 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 blah. We could take this, we could take it offline. And now, for example, if this is an external site, we can try to brute force, we can try to do other types of attacks against that. So, but let's see if we, uh, then we have a connection.php. So let's go ahead and just, let's go ahead. All right, so we have a username and password, right? From our thing. So let's try to access that, hacked accesses. Um, we have, all right, let's try to log in here with our, where is the, uh, I'm trying to, let's get to that. All right, so let me go ahead and just bring this over. Bring this over here and let's copy McGritty. So this is McGritty. Let's copy this and paste it here. And then to come back here and let's copy this password. So far, so good. Let's see if I uh, can get in here. All right, so we are in. So, all right, that's cool. Uh, looks like we have a flag up here, whoops. All right, so that's that's interesting. We have a flag there, so that's probably something that we need. All right, so is let's just start answering these questions, right? So the mitigation measures obviously employing strict input validation. Obviously, that's 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 a given. Uh, using allow list to control which domains and IPs to the application. So what this means, like you can have access control lists. And, and stuff like that, at least in the networking side, right? Like if you want something, say for example, myself, if I wanna be able to access this site, we can have any kind of, through the web application firewall or through whatever kind of traffic that we're monitoring, we can limit, it, uh, limit that, right? So, and then obviously applying network segmentation, that's like VLAN, we can segment the network, DMZ, demilitarized zones and all that stuff. And then following the, le the privilege of least no, principle of least privilege. That's a given, right? If you don't need it, don't give it. So that's a, that's definitely a good mitigation, right? So let's go to, to the questions now. Is SSRF the process in which the attacker tricks the server into loading? No, because it's all, no, that's, I guess, nay. Because everything is inside, right? It's not, there's no external resources because everything is internally. What is the version of the C2? I have no idea. Um, let's see, let's actually add this, uh, do, 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 oh, I think, what does this say here? Uh, it says something there. Oh crap. What did I do? I think that says 1.1. I think let's just see 1.1. Yeah. It's all the way in the bottom left hand corner here. This little cloud is in the way, but it's all good. So what is the username access? And that's that McGritty guy. So let's go back to our sublime. Let's go ahead and copy this. I just want to make sure, because I'm the worst speller, so I just want to make sure I don't spell something wrong. So what is the flag value after accessing? That's right here. So, ah, oh, crap. Let's go ahead and just cop, ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, let's try this again. Why can't I just let, let me click out of it and then, all right. I don't know why can I copy this thing? Uh, what's, what's going on here? There we go. 
Control C, let's come back down here. Control V, bing bong. All right, so what is the flag value after stopping the data exfiltration from the McSkitty computer? So let's come back down here, there's computers here. So McSkitty, if we remove this bad boy, I'm just thinking, remove, yeah. Bing bong, here we go. Let's copy this, paste, cool. Awesome. Day number 22 is done. Thank you so much for viewing, and I'll see you guys in day 23 tomorrow. Take care.